for you an introduction that has been inspired by this verse in Philippians. But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. So we want to focus on this aspect of God, that he is the supplier of our needs, all our needs. Now, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And when he created, he called it good. And all things were made by him, and all things were and are sustained by him. Everything from the stars in the heavens to the waters, creatures filling the world, botanical life, and humanity, all are made by and sustained by God. God provided all of the spiritual needs also that, that humanity required. You note that while humanity needed food, they needed shelter, they needed clothing, eventually they needed clothing because of their sin and their fall. All the things that man needed, though, in the garden, God supplied those things, and remember that he also walked with them in the cool of the day. So there, we are alerted to a need that humanity has. That is our need for fellowship and knowledge of the one true God. When sin was introduced, however, it was, if you may say, a, a way of humanity looking to another source to supply its need. Humanity decided it had a need that God wasn't fulfilling and looked to, to acquire that for themselves, and as a result, they fell. Now, when they decided to do that and they turned from the God who met all their needs, now felt need would be introduced into the world, and people would experience not having need met even, suffering hunger and, uh, and other things that we see happen in the world. The worst thing, of course, being cut off from humanity's deepest need, and that is fellowship with God. And since this departure, many have attempted to rid themselves of their state of need. They take pride in personal strength, in their income, in their health, in their intellect, or other personal resources, which cause them the reason that they actually do not need God. But all these things themselves are from God provisions of God, and it only takes becoming ill or becoming unemployed or let's just say growing old for someone to realize we have need and that we actually don't supply that need. A failing economy or business, poor crops, natural uh, distresses and disasters all alert people that we are frail and we have need. Also our acute need for God in his wisdom and grace and his mercy and fellowship become evidenced by the fact that humanity suffers discouragement. They suffer pain from crimes committed and harm done to others. They suffer from hopelessness of life, from sorrows. People clearly have need. Pain is most frequently the experience that causes people to acknowledge that that they have need, but so often is a source of confusion because people aren't actually looking to God. So when you look to God, pain, sorrow, suffering takes on new meaning because you're looking to God as the supplier of your need. Now, God not only knows our needs, but this is a thing that I've been thinking of more, more frequently that has been a source of comfort to me, and that is that God made us to have need. It is our condition. We have need. And God made us with need so that he would supply the need. So he didn't make anything independent of himself. He made it so that we he made us, made his creation to rely on him and rely on him alone and uh, the resources that he may use in order to, to help us. So from health to food to solace and sanctification to our spiritual fortitude, God is our provider. Satan will tempt you to think that God can't provide your needs or that God doesn't care about your needs or that God doesn't know about your needs. Many, many people have fallen into the belief of this lie. But faith presses in to obtain what God has promised, Amen. not relenting to despair and not looking to another source. The need is there for God to meet it, and that is what faith sees. Our greatest need is life to be born in us, the life of God, and to be brought into fellowship with Christ. The body will die and mortal needs will cease, 
But there will be a resurrection. There will be a resurrection either unto eternal life or unto eternal death. And so we see there are needs not connected to mortal needs that never cease to be met or needing to be met. Jesus is recorded as teaching in the synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing all manner of sickness and all manner of diseases among the people. You might say he was meeting all their need. All material and health-related needs parallel our most inward needs. We need bodily nourishment of food. We also need spiritual aliment and from Jesus, the bread of life. We require water. We also need to drink from the wells of salvation and from Christ, the living water. We require clothing. We also need to be clothed with righteousness. We need shelter. Christ is our propitiation. He has placed us within the will of God. We need health. We require our spiritual vitality. Work is actually a provision of God, a need that we have, and we've been called to labor with him in his salvation. Jesus healed the blind, the deaf, the lame, the crippled, the mute, the leprous, the hemorrhaging. He raised the dead and cast out demons. He also, as he healed the blind, he gives us to see God. As he healed the, he the deaf, he gives us to hear the words of God and understand them. As he healed the lame, he causes us to walk in the light. As he restored the cripper, cripple, he also calls us to rejoice in the spirit and labor with him. As he healed the mute, so we now may testify and edify with our tongue. As he cleansed the lepers, so he cleanses us and brings us into close fellowship with himself and his people. As he healed the hemorrhaging woman, he also grants strength and liberty to those who believe on him. And he raises the dead, so he also gives us newness of life resurrecting our spirit to live Godward. Amen. He is indeed supplying all our need. Amen. Now in the light of our greater need for spiritual life and vitality, our bodily needs are clearly seen as lesser. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And though the cause of these things can, can bring distress and test our faith, we can reason as those who have tasted of the heavenly gift that if we trust, that we trust in God to supply our greater and inward needs, if we do that, he most assuredly will meet our lesser needs. So we can obey when Christ speaks to us. Take no thought of saying, what shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or whither we shall be clothed? For your heavenly Father knoweth that you have need of these things. Let us state clearly that pain and suffering comes to everyone. No one is exempt from that. Not even our Lord Jesus was exempt from that. Yet consider how suffering takes on new meaning and purpose when one is seeking the face of God and committed to his service. As we mature in Christ, we recognize to what depth Christ satisfies our need and the depth of his provision. See, then in this light, we are able to suffer for his sake. Persecution changes our understanding of need. We learn how to go without certain things, and to suffer need in order to obtain greater things, Amen. right? So, so this is the difference then between Elijah in his need for food during a famine, God fed him with ravens. Yeah. But then you also see Paul, who was willing and, and did admirably, he suffered hunger and stoning and, and imprisonment and many other things for Christ's sake. Yet in both cases, need was met. Mm -hmm. Their yeah. need was met. Yeah. Because both were learning godliness with contentment is great gain. So our understanding of what need truly is matures the more we see the glory of God. So our eyes then lift higher and the things that we used to think were needs, we see they, they aren't really our true needs. And then we find that they're actually being met all the while. So our need is to make it through a cursed and hostile world, sanctified continually with our eyes set on God, with Christ, just as he did. That Jesus was the man of sorrows, and he himself speaks to us, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. All these things will be added unto you. It really obliterates worry. There are needs which will always be. One glory of heaven is in being in the state where our needs will perpetually be met without testing and trial. Yes. Mm -hmm. Amen. As Revelation says, they shall hunger no more, 
neither thirst any more, neither shall the sun light on them, nor any heat. For the Lamb which is in the midst of the throne shall feed them, shall lead them into living fountains of water, and God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. So this is my, my word to you this morning. Whatever you need in spirit, soul, and body, bring these petitions to our holy and gracious God and Father. He has fashioned us with need so that he may supply it. It is his good will and pleasure to do this. So don't let your hearts fail when you come on the threshold of need. Yeah. You know what I mean? You're like looking into it. You see there's, there's a need coming up. Don't let your heart fail. God is faithful. He has promised to supply all our need according to the riches Amen. of his glory by Christ Jesus. Let us turn our gaze upward with expectation that he will fulfill this promise. So we'll open with a prayer. Amen. Our dear Lord.